Hi, it's Jill Sprout here with this week's Scrap Your Stash feature. Scrapping your stash isn't just about working with what you have, it's about working with what you love. This week, as I share with you a layout celebrating my daughter's 16th birthday, I'm also celebrating my stash. In honor of the occasion, I challenged myself to create a layout primarily from odds and ends. Since I took a bunch of photos on my daughter's birthday, I chose my favorites and placed them all in a single block. No need to cut and arrange individual photos this way. I then made a concerted effort to try to locate odds and ends, papers and accents that I had already used in some way before, or packages that had already been opened. I allowed myself a few exceptions. For instance, the yellow background paper, these principles from Two Peas in a Bucket, and this twine from Webster's Pages I had never used before. Uh, but I did, as much as possible, try to select uh, supplies that were really odds and ends. The basic design of the page was actually pretty simple. I used the larger papers as a foundation and then gradually worked in smaller bits over that. Um, the confetti paper from Webster's Pages is definitely one of my favorites. Perfect for a birthday page like this. Um, and the neat thing is, is because it was already considered one of my odds and ends, um, I actually didn't really have to trim it at all. It was ready to go. And then that corrugated paper from Fancy Pants, I love this stuff. Um, it's used here as a photo mat, but it's also just great in layers. Um, and speaking of layering, here you can see I'm taking different strips uh, and layering them um, under the photos as well as under that corrugated paper. So there's the pink polka dots from Crate Paper, uh, which I've placed underneath the corrugated paper. And then this heart transparency, which I have kind of tilted at an angle just so that some of the hearts peek out. One thing to notice about the design on this page is that as each item is added, it's actually all kind of gravitating toward that photo center, which is not necessarily the physical center, uh, but it's the focal point of the whole layout, the series of photos. Um, the photos actually guide the color scheme, a lot of pinks and purples. There's even some blue and green thrown in there. Um, the photos guide the overall theme of the page but they also guide the eye. If you notice, everything is being tucked under either the photo itself or that corrugated paper um, underneath the photos. And so I tried to build up the layers, kind of staggering them in different heights along the way. So that corrugated paper really does serve a neat purpose on this page. It adds height, but it also allows me to add elements that are staggered throughout. Something that's really important to me when choosing accents is how each one contributes not just to the color scheme of the page, but to its overall feel, its message. Um, I generally don't choose accents at random. Um, sometimes the color does pop out to me, but if the accent doesn't work with reference to the overall theme or the kind of vibe that I'm trying to convey, I won't use it no matter how much I might like the color. Um, so here you can see that everything I've added in some way contributes to the overall theme or feel of the page. Um, some of them are birthday elements, like the word celebrate that I'm awkwardly trying to tuck into the page. Um, the heart, obviously kind of self-explanatory, but um, my daughter has my heart, so of course I'm going to work that in there. Um, the confetti that has a birthday feel, the repetition of the word happy, um, and I even tucked in a little principal piece from Two Peas in a Bucket. Technically those are um, holiday related principles, but since there was a number countdown and the number 16 stood out to me, I circled it with a gold pen and tucked it into this layout. I removed a few of those accents as I stitched up the left side of the page and then slowly worked them back in. Uh, one of the things that I added in the meantime was the journaling. Um, I ran the journaling through the printer and then I got the idea of putting a frame over it, uh, which wasn't part of the initial plan, um, but I really liked the idea. And so I used a today frame. Um, and though I would really like just that plain wood veneer look, I wanted to try out my new color shine mists from Heidi Swap. Um, I'm really excited about using these. Um, I'm a fan of all of the other ones, and so I recently bought the Seafoam and Blush colors. So this was my first time using blush. Isn't it pretty? Um, and the neat thing about it is it has this shine, which you can't really see here in the video. Um, but if you look at it at an angle, there's such a pretty shine there. Um, and so uh, the Today letters definitely uh, stood out to me because they're a negative space. 
And so what I wanted to do here is just to kind of play up once again that cheery birthday vibe. Um, I backed it with some taffy, uh, not real taffy, taffy glitter tape, I should specify. Um, and so it has this nice sweet 16 touch to it. At my daughter's birthday, we handed out these how well do you know the birthday girl questionnaires uh, and the person who got the most correct got a prize. Um, it was a whoopee cushion, very mature. Um, but in any case, uh, I wanted to add a copy of the questionnaire to this layout. And so I tucked it right behind um, that confetti paper. This is one of the advantages to not gluing everything down. I usually use double stick tape and kind of move things around as I work. Um, I decided to secure it with one of these cute little arrow pins from two peas in a bucket. Something just felt kind of off though about placing it at the bottom and I found that as I moved it to the upper right it actually made more visual sense. I think it has something to do with the Z on the other side. Um, I guess it's you know what you do to one side you do to the other um, but it also helps the eye to flow in a kind of Z formation. So you start at the top left, move over to the clip, down through today to the Z and then back across to the other side. So the eye just sort of flows through the layout that way. The final step was to add a stamped sentiment to this pink label. Uh, the stamp is from Two Peas in a Bucket, and I used Hero Arts Neon Ink, which I know looks really pink at first, uh, but it's really just this brilliant, beautiful pink color, as you can see after it's stamped. Um, I also love those stamp pads just because they stamp really crisply and cleanly. And so there it is. It says on this day, and I circled the Saturday uh, since that was the day of my daughter's party. Here it is, the completed layout. And there you have it. It's a testament to the fact that it is, in fact, possible to scrap your odds and ends and still create something cohesive. If I've learned anything from my daughter's 16th birthday, it's that even the oddest of mothers, after all, created the sweetest of daughters. Anything's possible. Now it's your turn to put your odds and ends to use on your next project. Be sure to share your completed projects at two peas in a bucket. Thanks for joining me for this week's Scrap Your Stash.